Joule Thomson porous plug experiment is used to measure the deviations from ideal behavior. So it is used to quantify the deviation from ideal behavior of gases and the deviation from ideal behavior is quantified by using change in temperature during the experiment. So the change in temperature is used to quantify deviation. So the experiment is about allowing a gas to flow from initial pressure and volume through a porous plug to another pressure and volume. We will see about the experiment in detail. So the experiment needs an apparatus and the apparatus is an insulated tube. So it is a tube which is separated into two parts by using a porous plate. So you can see the porous plug at the center or the porous plate. So which is dividing the insulated tube into two. On each side of the plate there are pistons. So you can see we have a piston on this side and we have another piston on this side. So these two pistons can be moved just to maintain the pressure difference on the right side and the left side of the porous plug. The pistons are used to maintain pressure. So P1 and P2 that is pressure 1 on the right left side of the porous plug and pressure 2 P2 on the right side of the porous plug and the pistons are not going to do any work. So no work is done okay, by the pistons. And since everything is insulated here, there is no heat transfer happening throughout the experiment. So as we can see here, gas at initial volume V1 is expanding into the right side of the porous plug to attain a final volume of V2. The pressure on the left side chamber is very much higher than the pressure on the right side chamber or ideally we can consider P2 is vacuum. So as the gas expands from P1 into vacuum, it expands into the right side of the porous plug to reach volume 2. Because of the expansion, the temperature on the right side of the porous plug and the left side of the porous plug are not going to be the same. This temperature difference is used to quantify the deviation from ideal gas behavior. So the work done in the left chamber W1 is equal to the integral of P1 into dV. The limits are V1 and 0 that is vacuum. So if we apply limits here, so this is going to become minus P1 V V1 and vacuum. So if we simplify this, so this is going to become P1 vacuum minus initial volume which is equal to minus P1 minus V1. So the work done on the left chamber W1 is equal to P1 V1. So as we can see the work here is positive. So the work done in the right chamber is given by the notation W2 which is equal to or minus P2 dV. The limits are vacuum and the volume that is the final volume into which the gas expands. So when we apply limits so this becomes P2, V0 and V2. So if we simplify this, so this is going to become minus P2 of V2 minus V0. So this is going to become minus P2 
V2. So the work done on the right chamber is equal to minus P2 V2. So the net work done can be given by W which is equal to the work done on the left chamber plus the work done on the right chamber which is going to be equal to P1 V1 minus P2 V2 and the net change in energy is given by del U which is equal to U2 minus U1. We know that the Joule Thomson experiment is carried out adiabatically and therefore the heat transfer is equal to zero. When we apply the first law of thermodynamics which is del U plus W is equal to Q. In this case Q is equal to zero. So because of that the expression becomes del U plus W is equal to zero. So when we substitute the values of work here, so this is going to become U2 minus U1 plus P1 V1 minus P2 V2 equals to zero. When we add U1 to both the sides to remove minus U1 from the left side, the equation is going to become U1 plus U2 minus U1 plus P1 V1 minus P2 V2 is equal to 0 plus u1. So u1 and minus u1 get cancelled. So finally what we get is u2 plus p1 v1 minus p2 v2 is equal to u1. So now when we add P2 V2 to both the sides. So the same equation is going to become P2 V2 plus U2 plus P1 V1 minus P2 V2 is equal to U1 plus P2 V2. So we can cancel P2 V2 and minus P2 V2 and the expression is going to become U2 plus P1 V1 is equal to U1 plus P2 V2. We can see that both the sides of the equation are the same. So we can flip the equation to present the initial state on the left side and the final state on the right side. So we can write it as u1 plus p1 v1 is equal to u2 plus p2 v2. From the definition of enthalpy, we know that enthalpy is equal to U plus P V. So if we substitute it in the previous equation, so the equation is going to become H1 is equal to H2 or we can say the change in enthalpy is equal to 0. So we can see that Joule Thomson experiment is isenthalpic and adiabatic. So to quantify the deviation from ideal behavior, Joule Thomson coefficient is used. So Joule Thomson coefficient is indicated by the notation nu 
with a subscript JT. So, which is defined as the change of temperature with pressure. So, change of temperature at constant enthalpy. So, practically, Joule Thomson coefficient is measured from the temperature change. So, we can rewrite this as the temperature change as it undergoes a pressure drop or as it expands through the porous plug at constant enthalpy. So, the real gases are going to have different temperature change as it is expanding through the porous plug. So, we can see here, so the Joule Thomson coefficient can be positive, can be negative or it can be zero. So, in the case of gases that cool upon expansion, Joule Thomson effect is going to be positive. So, you can see, so upon cooling the temp temperature will be dropped. So, negative temperature divided by negative pressure that is expansion. So, it is going to become positive. And some gases are going to warm upon expansion through the porous plug. So, temperature increases. So, positive divided by negative value at constant enthalpy, it is going to be negative. So, Joule Thomson coefficient is going to be negative for gases that warm upon expansion. Whereas, when there is no change in temperature, so Joule Thomson effect is going to be. So, such a temperature is called inversion temperature.